top five school slash work from home hacks you could do right now. They say laziness is the mother of invention and this couldn't be more true. Majority of the major inventions that have came into our lives has been the result of a lazy person or the idea from a lazy person. It's an extremely good quality to have. In fact, Bill Gates has this quote where he says, I choose a lazy person to do a hard job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. Beautiful. If you develop this habit early on, your life will be so successful. Now, I already know, I'm gonna have a few comments where people are saying this is unethical, but really this video is a light of spark in you. If you ever feel blocked or constrained, I want you guys to think outside the box. I want you guys to go over all of the different possibilities that you may be able to accomplish, research them, and try to find a way out no matter what. With that being said, let's start with number one. So here's the scene. You just got a new job and you're taking security one-on-one for the sixth time in your career. Now, you've already taken this course many times, but your boss won't hear you out. So here's what we do. We're gonna go to youtube.com. We're gonna find a random video that comes up. The odd one is out. I almost lost a thousand dollars. So now we have this video up and now it's playing at one X speed. But let's say we wanted to make this video faster. Now YouTube has a setting where you can click the playback speed. You could pick up to two X, but this is still not fast enough. This video is eight minutes long. You want to get done with it, you know, within two minutes. So we're going to pull up our inspector tools. On Mac, you can open up your developer tools by pressing command option C. And on Windows, it's control shift C. So this may look a little scary at first. I remember the first time I seen my inspector tools, but it's not as scary as it looks, and I'm about to show you why. If you press this little mouse icon right here, the select an element, then you'll be able to look at different pieces on the page. So we look at our video right here, you'll notice that there's an HTML tag called video right here. So this video is a generic tag in HTML, and you can change a lot of different properties on this video tag in JavaScript. So right now we're going to go to the console tab the console tab is where you can write your javascript and the browser has to take the javascript for the most part so now that we have found our tag name we need to grab that in the javascript and then we'll be able to manipulate it so we're going to do document get elements by tag name and our tag name is video so now you'll see the html collection right here but we want to get that first element that it found so we're gonna use the first index. So we're gonna do zero. And now we have our video tab. You hover over it, you'll see that it's covering the video. So now that we have that, we can do play, which is gonna start the video. We can pause the video. So we'll have it playing, and now we can even speed it up. Playback rate, let's make it 15. See how fast this video is going? Now this eight minute long video is gonna be crushed down to a few seconds. And yeah, that's our first one. So let's go to number two. OpenAI released a language AI system and they called it GPT-2. And then someone made a slimmed down version and then created their own website on it where you can just enter your text. That website is called talktotransformer.com. Now, GPT-2 is obviously, it's AI based. It's not all the way there yet. It's not exact like a human, but it'll get you a start. So I'm gonna throw a prompt in there. It's gonna say, according to my research, I really don't know how Kingdom Hearts 3 could have been so disappointing. Everything led up to here, but it left me empty inside. Kind of like in the first game, where it said, like, is any of this for real or not? It's actually truly how I felt, honestly. So let's complete the text and see what we get back. So the AI said, some of it was actually pretty good. The new game is actually something else entirely, but the overarching story just seems to lack. I don't know, closure or a little more soul? I actually didn't feel that. I knew the answer to what the actual game and outcome of the game was. From what I know, it wasn't Sora. But in the end, maybe he didn't have to die. Maybe he died. Spoiler alert. Not a spoiler alert. Now you see, this can almost pass as a human, honestly. Straight like this. We don't have to do anything else to modify this. This is actually pretty good. I don't know where Sora died, but okay. You can also generate another text. And the answer is not the sequel failed to hook me with the universe, but it also failed to break my heart. Every time I revisit this game now, it just feels empty again. They're hitting points right now. <laughs> it doesn't have that experience or emotion I have with Kingdom Hearts 2. Sure, I think it's cool that the characters are back and the music is amazing, but it doesn't mean I feel the same way. And that is sad. That is sad. That really is sad. That was a pretty good response. So now one more before we go. It also can complete a text. So you start with three words. Let's say you're trying to write an essay and you need to start you just write a few words and then talk to Transformer will continue that sentence. So the human race continues to find super ways to do things in the name of entertainment. 
And that can be said of the ever-growing, ever more mobile forces of the money war. More so than ever, everyone needs to keep an eye on what's happening on the streets and in the trailers. And so on. You get the idea. Let's move on to number three. Now this last one is all too relatable. It's so relatable that I literally made a website for it. So lbg.ahacove.com. And LBG stands for Lecture Be Gone. So now you're gonna have hundreds of thousands of meetings. You're gonna have hundreds of thousands of classes online. You know, you can't keep track of everything. You can't really take notes of everything. So instead, you can dig into Chrome's Speech Recognition API. So on this site, you can literally just, there's one thing you can do, you can press start. And once you press start, you can start talking and it will start printing what you're actually saying on screen in real time. Now the code is pretty simple. This is pretty much it. So there's the index.html and then there's the JavaScript. JavaScript, I mean, it's 100 lines long, but it's not too bad, you know, especially to make something like this. And then if you press stop, you'll also be able to export. And if you export, you'll have your text document here. So press start when you're talking and then it basically exports it to a text document where you can edit the places that it kind of messed up on. I would say 90% of the time, it'll get it correct if you're speaking clearly into the microphone. Oh wait, one second, I have a Zoom meeting coming up. The goal of this meeting is to inform the masses that our app will be the best that ever lived. But there's a few steps that we have to take before we get there. So I'm going to need all of you rascals to write everything I say down or else. You better not be dozing off or leaving the room to eat dates either. This talk could be 30 minutes long or 30 hours. Doesn't matter because you're working from home anyway and don't have any other obligations. Look at the answers when I say, hey, I can't even speak anymore because you know why. And I'm done. And just like that, my meeting's over. And that brings us to number four. Up until this point, everything was software related or on a website or something like that and easy to use. This one may be a little more complicated unless you're already inside the engineering side. For this one, we'll be using Arduino. I'm using a Pro Micro to be exact, but you can also use like Leonardo, uh, but you can't use a Uno. Uno won't work for this. This is something I actually made for one of my friends. So at their job, they have this application that watches every move they make and then spies on them. And if they don't use their keyboard or move their mouse in a certain amount of time, then it'll notify and uh, count as a strike against them. It's super micromanaging. And there's things that's going on when you're working at home or you're taking school from home that may pop up. So we're just gonna plug the Arduino and plug it into our computer. We're gonna open up Arduino on the computer and then I already wrote some code here. So we're gonna paste that in. So what it does is move the mouse for 10 times and then stops. And then we have a delay here, 4,000 milliseconds. This is because we don't want the mouse still moving around while we're trying to stop the Arduino. So I have four seconds to figure things out. So we'll come to tools to make sure we're connected to the right Arduino. So right here, we're not on the right board. We're on a Pro Micro. And then we need to make sure we're on the correct port. We're gonna upload the sketch. And now we wait a few seconds and watch as our mouse is moving. My hand's up here and my mouse is going crazy right now. So it gives us four seconds. Now I can actually stop the sketch. Well, now I can't, but right when it's done, I'll be able to stop the sketch. Let me comment this out just so it doesn't uh, tick over again. <laughs> now, as you see, that's kind of annoying. So I actually made a button connected to this. And what this button does is when it's off, the mouse won't be moving. And when it's on, the mouse will be moving. The Arduino has a built-in pull-up switch, so you don't need a resistor for a button like this. So we're just gonna paste that new code in here. And now you see this if digital read two equal go high. If it's high, then it won't be moving. And if it's low, then it will be moving. So we're gonna replace that. And now you see, so the button is on right now. So the mouse is moving. And when we turn that button off, the mouse stops. On. Off. And that's how you get by that issue. And that brings us to number five. So we have another Zoom hack and it's pretty appropriate for this time because everyone's using Zoom right now. So I know you guys know of Zoom's virtual background. So Zoom's virtual background goes something like this. So I select the virtual background and then now you have something in the background going on right now. But this isn't enough because right now you still have to be on camera while you have these long 
boring lectures or meetings or whatever you don't need to really be in. You're a grown person, come on now. You know what you need and what you don't need. And I'm not gonna tell you what you need and don't need, but I'm gonna give you an option. So there's this app called Webcam Way. What this app allows you to do is create a virtual camera. If you notice in Zoom, if you go to video, you'll see that the only camera that I have right now is my FaceTime camera. And if you share a screen, then share a screen will come up and everyone will know you're sharing a screen versus having a real video. So that's where Webcam Way comes in. So yeah, so once you open up Webcam Way, you'll be able to go to preferences. You'll be able to create a new camera. We'll call it Zoom Cam. Press OK. And now you can come over to configure sources. And now we can add a new source, create a new media file, and then select your media file. Press OK. And now click that media file, run, press play. And now I see the video is playing on webcam mode, but right now it's still live for the Zoom meeting. So we come down here, you may have to restart your Zoom. For me it worked immediately, but sometimes you have to restart Zoom just to get that camera clicking in. So if I click Zoom cam, now that video is playing. See that video from webcam mode? And I'm just sitting back, chilling, while the teacher thinks I'm over here paying attention. You don't even have to get on camera for the day, you know? Just let webcam way run and then you're good. So that kind of wraps up number five. Huh? Who is this? Oh, my brother. Um, so basically, my school right now, we're doing a Zoom class, like all the other people's mm. My teachers, they just don't know how to use it. And they don't know how to use Google Docs either, They don't know how to use an attachable link. No. So at least I enjoy the Zoom class, have to type in a long, long number. But can't you just copy and paste? Because my teachers, they never make the doc edible. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Well, I got something for you. It's, it's crazy that you just called me because I was just working on school slash work from home hacks. But let, let's, I'm, I got you. I got you, all right? So let's say you have a website where you can't copy and paste a text. So right here, you can't copy and paste that. So right there, if you open up your dev tools, remember command option C for Mac or control shift C for Windows. So we open up our developer tools again. We click the mouse and select this. So right here, you'll see that this class is called lock here and it has user select none. If we turn user select none off, then we can copy and paste just as usual. So I can copy this link, paste it in the browser and then we're good to go. Or if say if you couldn't get past that, there's also inside the developer tools inside the elements. You can look right here and see the text. You copy and paste right there, you can change it. You can literally change the whole website. And then here you go. So now if there's someone tries to lock you down and doesn't allow you to copy and paste, as long as it's not an image, then you should be good. And we're done. Easy. Very easy. Comment down below if you have any other things. If you're in school, if you have any blockers in school that's going on right now. Uh, if you have any things that's going on in your job where you feel like it's too micromanaging and you need to have some time to yourself. If we have enough valuable blockers, maybe we can make a part two of this video. Anyway, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and continue to embrace the spark.